What's up, YouTube? Um, today I wanted to talk about some sleepers, some guys that are currently going outside the top 100, so their ADP is 100 or above in giraffes. And I'm doing this according to Yahoo's ADP. Um, obviously, from site to site, ESPN, CBS, whatever, uh, the ADP is different. But I'm going to stick with Yahoo for now because that's probably the best fantasy um, website online, in my opinion. So, uh, basically, these guys are ones that you'll get in the 10th round or later. And a lot of people, I know, people go on auto-pick by this time. People don't give a shit. People don't know the people, the players that are even left at this point. Um, but the good fantasy players will have, uh, I guess, a strategy or players at the end of the draft that they want to take. Because they know they have a high upside. They're getting drafted really late. So, rather than taking... a uh, fucking defense or kicker in the 10th round, 11th round, uh, you still have options, good uh, flex players, receivers, running backs, tight ends, things like that, that have a chance of really catapulting themselves by the end of the season. So I'm going to get into players outside the top 100 ADP that I think will finish the season inside the top 50 rankings. So let's get started. Uh, first guy I wanted to talk about was Emmanuel Sanders. He is currently going at 101. And he is, um, he was pretty productive on the Steelers last year for the last couple of years. And now that he is on the Broncos, he's got Peyton Manning throwing him the ball. And like probably many of you already know, uh, Wes Walker just got diagnosed with his third concussion in the last uh, 10 months or something like that. So um, Welker's a huge concern for injury. I mean, he's, he's getting through the test and he should be ready for week one to go. But the fact that um, the injury label is going to be there all season, uh, Welker's a small receiver. Not that he gets hurt a lot, really, besides the concussions. But the concussion is a huge deal. The way the NFL has been uh, really like bearing down on the concussions. And um, you never know. He's one hit away from possibly ending his season, ending his career, things like that. So um, that's really why Emmanuel Sanders will be on this list because he's a good receiver. He's not He's not like a bullshit player. Um now, if Welker goes down, he'll step right into the slot. And uh, last preseason game, he came in, he had five catches for, I think, 127 yards, two touchdowns. So him and Manning obviously have a little chemistry there. And if he steps in as the uh, slot role where Welker is, or even taking the position that Decker was at last year, he's going to put up numbers, probably similar to what Decker put up last year. So anything 1,000 yards and six to eight, maybe even more touchdowns is definitely not out of his possibility. So that's a receiver for you. Uh, let's move to a tight end. Um, Zach Ertz for the Philadelphia Eagles. He's going, what is he going? Uh, around 101, 102, so right outside the top 100. And since the tight end class is so deep, uh, I definitely wouldn't suggest reaching for um, the top tight ends. I mean, unless you really, really feel that... Um, that gives you a huge advantage in your league or you league, your league plays. I know I'm in a league where the tight end gets 1.5 points per reception, which is fucking weird, but whatever. Um, so just like the QB position, there's so many good players in the back ends of the draft that you can get. I wouldn't suggest taking one in the first couple rounds uh, unless you got a really good value. Like if you're getting Jimmy Graham at the end of the second round or something like that, don't skip on him. But um, Zach Ertz, yeah. So this guy is like an athletic freak. He... Um, He's primed for a breakout this year. He um, Right now, he's actually behind Brent Selleck on the depth chart. That's only because of his uh, Selleck's blocking. But Ertz really came on at the end of last year, uh, putting up really good numbers the last few games of the season. Uh, him and Foles have gotten a good chemistry. Uh, Foles played with Gronkowski at Arizona in college, and he um, was quoted this offseason saying that Ertz is – just as talented, if not more talented, than Gronkowski was. So he's played with both of them, and he's comparing Ertz to Gronkowski. Uh, Ertz runs a faster 40 time. He has a higher vertical jump than Gronk. And um, there's a quote that came out from the tight ends coach on the Eagles saying that Ertz is one of the best route runners he's ever seen. So Ertz is getting all this hype. Uh, he's played well in the preseason, nothing crazy, but um, the Eagles are going to run a ton of two tight end sets this offseason. I mean, this this season, not offseason, sorry. 
this season. So he, regardless where he is on the depth chart, he's going to be their pass catching tight end, and he's going to get plenty of snaps, plenty of playing time, um, and he's going to be their main red uh, red zone target. So with Deshaun Jackson out, obviously it's more targets for all the receivers on the team, which is good for Ertz. And uh, I think he's going to catch a ton of touchdowns in that offense, and he's going to be a really productive player with a breakout year. Um, okay, let's move to a wide receiver. This guy I love. He's probably my highest um, out of the top ADP of 100. I think this guy is my favorite. Uh, it's Kelvin Benjamin from the Carolina Panthers. He was the first-round draft pick for them this 2014 NFL draft. He's 6'5", 240 pounds out of Florida State. He's going at like 120 or 122, so you can get him real late in the drafts. Um, and he's a guy who has done awesome this offseason. Um, there's question marks coming in about his hands. Um, his He lacks elite speed, but so does so many of the top receivers. Uh, speed's not... Speed's not really a huge issue if you could run great routes and you can catch the ball. So far this offseason, he, he, they've been raving about him catching everything that's thrown his way. Him and Cam Newton have, um, have developed an awesome chemistry. It seems that like every time Cam Newton throws the ball, he's looking to Benjamin's way first. With uh, Steve Smith's out, Brandon LaFell's out, almost all his top receivers are gone from last season. So Benjamin's going to come in and take that number one receiver spot for the Panthers, and he's going to get a ton of targets. Like I said, he's huge. Um, he will get the red zone targets. They're going to throw him jump balls, and uh, I really see him emerging as a 800 yards, maybe more, um, probably eight eight touchdowns minimum, I think, with all the red zone targets he's going to get. Uh, they throw to him downfield. They throw to him across the middle, um, anything like that. I really think Benjamin's going to have a huge uh, breakout year. For a rookie, I think he's going to be the top rookie receiver. Um, and like I said, you can get him real late. His ADP is 122, so you could probably grab him at the 10th round. I know he's kind of uh, he's getting a lot more hype as the offseason goes on, so he's probably getting picked earlier in drafts, but I'd still um, look out to get him in the 9th, 10th round, something, something like that. As for running backs, I don't see a lot of potential outside the ADP 100, but obviously there are always guys who make it into the higher rankings that are ranked outside. Um, I would say the highest possibility of a, a lower-ranked running back to get into the top 50 would be guys who would come in because of injury. Um, so you have Carlos Hyde behind Frank Orr. Frank Orr is, obviously, he's over 30 years old. He's gotten a ton of carries throughout his career. Um Carlos Hyde's already projected to get a good amount of carries behind Gore. So if Gore were to suffer an injury, Carlos Hyde would immediately jump into the high-end RB2, RB1 uh, spectrum. He's a good pass catcher. Uh, he runs in between the tackles. He, he has a running style just like Frank Gore. So uh, he'd be a great pick to uh, handcuff if you have Gore. Um, also, you have guys behind Marshawn Lynch, who's also getting old. He's got a ton of carries. I mean, he doesn't have an injury history, so I don't know why people are so crazy about um him him possibly going down with an injury this year. I still think Marshawn Lynch is a great RB1 um, at the end of the first round. Uh, there's the guys like Christine Michael um, and Robert Turbin that are right behind him on the depth chart. So if he were to go down with injury, those are great guys to have, um, possibly handcuff. And then there is Steven Jackson, another really, I guess the theme here is these fucking really old guys. Um, got a lot of wear and tear on their tires. So if... I mean, it's probably a good bet that one of those three go down with an injury. So having their backups is good for Steven Jackson. Uh, Anton Smith is actually a very underrated running back who will get carries if Jackson goes down. But uh, I think the guy to own the handcuff is Devontae Freeman, who's a rookie running back out of Florida State. Um, but Jackson's going so late in drafts that I don't know if it's worth a pick to handcuff him. Uh, Devontae Freeman will almost definitely be on the waiver wire rather than on someone's team. So that's just someone to look out for. So, just to recap, we got Zach Ertz, Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Kelvin Benjamin as the three guys outside the top 180p that will end up top 50 rankings by the end of this year. You heard it here first. Adios, YouTube.